My name is Dita. I am a roller skater. I roller skate and sometimes I talk about roller skating. And today's <laughs> talk, we're going to go over a little tutorial on how you can prolong the life of your Moxie roller skates, shoes, or anything else that you appreciate having a toe on. Maybe not your foot. I don't know if it's toxic. But we are going to go back to what I was saying about Moxie roller skates being uh, the most beautiful skates on the market, quite frankly. Suede, gorgeous colors. And part of the reason why I don't use a toe guard is because I really like the way the skate looks. It's aesthetically so pleasing that I don't necessarily want to put something on my toe until I need to. Plus when you take it off, then you have a perfect toe and the rest of the skate is worn and torn. So I wait until I need to cover my toes before I actually make that step. And I still didn't really like the, the way that the toe guards fit with my skates. So I developed a system about probably seven years ago that is very long lasting, durable. It doesn't mark up bowls or ramps and keeps my toe protected and allows for reapplication as much as necessary. It takes me about two years for my toes to look like this, which is right at the borderline of needing to have something done. And that's where I like to get it. The other one is a little bit more damaged, but I allowed that so that we can see how the application changes with that, with that damage. So today we're going to take our Moxie roller skates and a product that is called Plasti Dip. Originally, this Plasti Dip was literally a dip and it's used mostly in shops to dip the handles of tools and to grip other things, but it's flexible, it doesn't crack, it's got grip, it's very durable, it comes in assorted colors. I use black for some colors and I also use the gray for other colors. The fuchsia I think looks great with the gray, but the red is, is fantastic with black. So you'll need this. It is between four and six dollars a can. You will also need masking tape. I get the cheap stuff because I don't need to peel it back off the wall so I'm not worried about you know, making a big long run strip. So the two of these items I purchased today for $8. And there is applications that I would say you could get anywhere from 10, 20, maybe even 30 applications with this, depending on how thick or how many coats you put on. I normally just do a couple coats and uh, that's what we're gonna be doing today. When I try to do the application process, I want to look at where the largest scuffs or damage is because I'm going to tape it off in a manner that will encompass that and I want both skates toes to be even. There's a lot of options when it comes to taping off of your skate. Whatever shape you want, whatever you dream of, I generally go with kind of a wing tipped look but you could essentially just go straight over for a, like this for a, an actual capped look. But I like mine to be a little bit more um, designed or stylized, I guess is the word for that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just pulling the tape into the shape of the wingtip, tucking it in, run my finger across. Coming down on this side trying to match up that same arc that I did, which I didn't do a good job of. So luckily it's tape and we can pull it back up and relay it. And now it's perfect. Look at that. So I'm creating a little wing tip on there. I want to also protect the sole because this is made to stick to stuff. And I want to get it as close to that outsole and leather line as possible, as you can see there, so that all of the, toe, the spray goes onto the toe and not to these other areas. If you're worried about overspray, you can simply take a piece of paper, put the masking tape on ahead of time. I trust me, it's easier that way. And then I'll just lay that on top of the tape I already laid down. 
creating this and maybe a little tiny bit extra down here to make sure I don't get it in any of my toe stop housing. Through the wonders of movie magic, both of my skates are ready. And I was gonna allow you guys to see a close up of this guy. So you can see there's a pretty in-depth damage. I would consider this a full blown toe hole. And I'll show you the difference in the coverage of those. So I'm gonna spray that one first. Oh, while well, I'm shaking. I forgot to mention that I'm gonna answer all your questions at the end, but I'm not gonna scroll back. So wait until I say, hey, what are your questions? Before you type them in, because those are the ones that are gonna get answered at that point. Write them down, save them, pre-type them, cut and paste. And I'm gonna make sure that we don't end up uh, in one of those wind in my face situations. I'm not the most careful person. But that shows you that anyone can do this. <laughs> so let's do it. I usually go pretty, pretty thick on the first coat. Just make sure it looks wet. I may have let this toe go too far. There we go. I'll show you in a second. Give me one. Give me one sec. We'll get some serious action on here. All right. So I've got it all wet looking. As you can see, not so hot on that hole. So you might want to do it a little bit before that. And I want it pretty wet without allowing it to drip. If it starts to drip or settle, I would suggest tapping it, which will allow it to come down a little bit more evenly there. All right. And then as it comes down, I'll just tear off a little piece of paper to make sure that it gets even. And if I have extras like this, I can kind of, you know, pad that hole up a little bit. It's gonna take a little bit more work to fill something that deep but if you see i can pull this off and kind of use it to make sure that hole and then i'll just make sure on the final spray i get a good coverage to make up for that little that little bit i touched to even out the finish all right that's going to set and dry for a second while i spray my other toe oops Whoops, forgot it's windy. Almost sprayed the wrong shoe. All right, let's get on here again. There we go. The other one took longer, it was a brand new can. Gotta get this bad boy started. All right, this is great. This is the kind of coverage I wanna see which tells you take care of it before it's too late. Look at that, much more nice shine and gloss. So while I'm letting those set for a second, I don't even know, uh, here's that tiny hole we saw before. I'm gonna fill that. All right, it looks great. I'm really happy with this one. Only look at one of my feet ever. I only have one foot now. I'm gonna be a pirate skater. All right, those are gonna set aside and dry. And I wanna talk a little bit about the durability. I usually only do two light coats because you can reapply it as many times as you need to, to protect, to repair. Uh, and this one I did approximately two months ago. I've been in some pretty intense ditches lately I lost some face, some shoulder. <laughs> There's this lovely little guy I have right here that uh, corresponds with a little uh, streaking action here. You might have seen that on a story I posted recently. So here it is. The ditches took off my face, my flesh, left scars, but this toe dip, look at this. While it's gone, 
it hasn't cut into the leather and it has allowed me to keep the toe I did have and I can retape this and go ahead and coat it again as many times as I want. So these will we get another coat, but we're doing black today. And like I said, I like the, the gray much better. Well, for you guys, I would recommend waiting normal dry times. I'm kind of impatient. You choose your own, you choose your own in that situation, but I really want to get a couple, a couple extra coats on this and it's getting a little windy. So I'm going to turn away from y'all, but I'll hold it up so you can see what I'm doing. Once you get the first coat on, the other ones become really easy because they're not absorbing into the leather anymore. So you don't need as much to get shiny. If you notice, I kind of started doing like spurts instead of sprays. Tips of the trade, you know? I'm gonna go ahead and try to get a little more fill in those holes. This one's gonna get three coats because it's pretty damaged. And then the other one will just get my standard double coat special. I'm kind of just puttying it like it was a wall. I'm going to steal some extra from over here. This bad boy needs a little more help. What foot is that? That's a, my right foot? I don't know my right and my left. I'm really, really bad about that. But I heard that's a sign of genius. It's not. All right. I forgot to show you, as it dries, this is the one that was very, very smooth and it dries and see there's a little bit, you can start to see the nap of the leather come through. That's the point in which I want it to have a better, better surface area, be smooth, look more like the dip action. So I will go ahead and give this one the second coat. Oh yeah, oh, it's gorgeous, it's gorgeous. Someone's gonna be very, lucky to get these bad boys. Call at me if you're a size six. I like to go ahead and when I get to this point on my skate, I generally need a new boot myself and I really like to re-dye my current boot back to the original colors and then put a toe cap on them and then I like to pass on these skates and bust open a new one. So these ones are at the end of their, their life for me. I got a, with the new caps, I'll have another year on these ones. They generally last me about three years before I move on to the next set completely. All right, is this one ready? That, it's fine, the toe's already protected. It's not like I dropped the wet one. All right, this one is gonna take a third. This one I like as it is. I'm gonna just hit this one in the, in the needy spots real quick. I'm really excited. I hope that some of you go out there and you do like crazy designs with this stuff. It's also very good on surfaces. I noticed I went to a brand new Masonite ramp and I was trying to, trying to do <laughs> a 540 and I kept landing on my toe and I noticed these like, these like little lines and I felt really bad and I went over, I ran my finger across it and it was like when you make an eraser mark and it leaves the little eraser things behind and you run your hand across and it came completely off. So once it gets on surfaces after it's dry, it just brushes right off. So it's a great way too. I could have easily left like red streaks on that ramp that wouldn't have gone off, but the toe cap acted essentially like an eraser and it was the cleanest part of that ramp. All right, I'm gonna get, touch this one one more time too so that they're even, even though this one doesn't really need it. I have a problem. Got it. <laughs> also, patience is a virtue. 
Additionally, patience is something I don't have. As each coat is getting thinner and thinner, I know that this isn't gonna run on me. Also experience tells me this. So I'm gonna pull this off for viewing now so that we can go ahead and get a closer look of this one. I see an error I made already. Remember, get it close to the line. This is the one I did live. That one will be perfect. All right. Move our tapes. And I, the other reason I like to pull it off a little bit early before it's all the way set is because I don't want it. I don't know if it will. It never has. I haven't ever waited. But I don't want it to become joined with the tape as the paint goes over and rubberizes. I don't want to have to go in and cut a, cut the line. So this will make sure that it is properly released onto the boot. And if there's any, oh, it didn't happen here. If there's any like white marks left from the tape, once it's dry, you can just use tape to you know, pull those back off for you. All right, you ready for the reveal? And I'll show you my error <laughs> when you do stuff too fast. So there is the end result. There is my error. Whoops. <laughs> Ideally, <laughs> this is when I said make sure the tape goes directly to the line. I didn't listen to myself. But the great part is this isn't a super damaged area for me. Next time I spray it, if they were mine, I could redo it. I can also tape off this small air, tape it off again and run another coat over it and no one would ever know. Now it's just silly. And let's uh, see this guy, let's see how it's turned out. All right, so this is part of why I pull it off early. I let this one dry, I'm gonna have to be real careful taking this guy off where it's stuck. See how the, see how it rubber, the rubberizes? So I like to take it off before it does that because I want the line to be really crisp. This is okay because it's just on the, on the other tape part where it did that. Yeah, yeah boy. And I get to show you how to take the white stuff off too. All right. This line is really clean. That's what I like to see. There's a nice clean line. And then you can also see those little white specks. And this is what I was talking about, about filling that toe. It's already kind of damaged to the point where it's not that fun. You could do pre-work, perhaps gluing in pieces of leather or filler. I tried hot glue before, but hot glue doesn't seem to have the same texture. So you could kind of see that there was like this lumpy thing over. You see those white specks too? I'm gonna to show you how to get those off real quick. Real quick. Bring it in. So those little white specks, all I do is go in with the tape and they come right back off. And that's it. This is how we toe dip, which is not a dance move. Sounds like one. When I dip, you dip, we dip. Again, my name is Dita. I skate, I roller skate, and then sometimes I skate. So if you would like to see more on this or even an update on who gets these and how they hold up, go ahead and like and subscribe. We're always putting out stuff. I can't wait to show you some other really neat ways to take care of your skates. Oh, I almost blew it. <laughs>
Ding! Don't stick them together. They're sticky. All right. So now I'd like to go ahead and open y'all up for questions on Plasti Dip. I have a, uh, not a question. Masking tapes or skates. Uh, a nice person by the name of Mallory Forrest, I believe sent you 20 bucks. Mallory! This will save you more than that, so good for you. Way to kick back at that. Mallory, hit me up in uh, those DMs. I'll give you all the, I'll give you all that, the what what. I actually have a, a pretty in-depth, closer, how to do the fixes where I teach somebody who makes mistakes. So if y'all would like to see that, maybe we'll, maybe we'll get that going at some point. Who knows? Are we ready for questions? Ready for questions? All right. There better be a link in here, Bobby. You got a link. Come on, Bobby. Everybody's asking who's got the camera, so now they know. Oh, it's um, um, Fred Astaire. So that was really great for us. Let me get in here. Toe dip tutorial. Oh, there's a picture of me. Oh, aren't you lucky? I didn't, I actually haven't seen what I look like today. So this is the first for me. All right, into the questions. Is this in live? Am I, is they somewhere else? What do I, how do I do it? You want me to tell you? Yeah, it's got me looking at myself right now. Is there a little chat? like bubble thing. Oh. Maybe I'm in the wrong account. I can't Here, switch. Let me try to figure it out for you in the meantime. Yeah, what Chris got me? Chris Chris got me another one here. Let's see if I can uh, get in on this one. No, I don't got any bubble on here. I think I'm signed on to the wrong account. So if you would like to let me know. Check the message I sent you. That should be the link. I think I'm signed into the wrong account on YouTube though. So it's like having me go in as a well, I'll, I'll, send you, I'll give you some questions. All right, so let's hear what kind of questions we have here today. Mini Roller Skate asks, do you have a YouTube channel? I do have a YouTube channel. Uh, my YouTube <laughs> channel has uh, is not very well curated. I put some stuff up a while back, but if you would like to see some other stuff that I do, I have a YouTube channel called Anti-Click, the Anti-Click Zine. And that has a lot of edits that we, we've made in the past. Mine is Dita Does, but Dita does not do well at managing her own YouTube. Okay. Captain Tech asks, not a real skate question, but how is your day? My day is going really well. It's not too hot, not too cold. I'm here at this lovely park, got this great spot. Didn't uh, get any wind feedback from the spray paint so I don't have uh, rubberized freckles on my face so that's great. Uh, Batcat asks, Dita, how much does a can typically cost? Thanks. So today this can, if you buy it online, I, I see them mostly for $4.99 online. I bought mine today at a regular like a home improvement store, Lowe's. So it was about five eighty nine. This was two something. So it's roughly under ten dollars for both items. All right. Monique Miranda asks, "What's your dream skate color?" Oh, that's a really interesting question because I was when I first saw Moxies. I'm not a very colorful person. I would say. And I was like, I don't even know which color I would get. They're all so bright. I, I can't, I just can't. And then I went with the fuchsia one because it wears so nicely. It turns into that really cool, like dusty mauve color. And I appreciated that. So I went with that. And now when I'm in a skate park, if I don't see fuchsia on my feet, I don't feel right. It's been about probably seven years now that every time I'm in a skate park, I always have the same color skates on. I keep replacing that boot about every two to three years. And if I look down in a skate park and I don't have fuchsia skates on, 
I can't skate as good, I promise you. I, I won't know whose feet, I won't know where to look, I'll get confused. So where I could have told you what an ideal skate color would have been, I now am a fuchsia lover, which is a little bit unfortunate because fuchsia, getting the ax, getting the ax. We're gonna be getting a, a, some other, all of our colors are gonna be getting a little brighter and, and going into a whole new awesomeness level. But Fuchsia didn't, <laughs> Fuchsia didn't make the cut. It's not, a, it's not our most popular one. So if you want that Fuchsia color, you better, you better get on there now and make sure you order it before the, the rollout of the new colors. Looney Roller Skate asked, Hi Dita, how, how many skates do you have? Looney, that's a cool question. Um, I do a lot of skate testing, but I am very, I want to, I want to use my things up and, and kind of, a, a repurposing and a very frugal way. I, I use my boot, like I said, for two years, then I'll tape it or tow it and go ahead and pass it on. So I'm actually just a, more of a replacer. I do have um, three pairs that are on regular rotation, all for different purposes, because I'm lazy. I don't know why I'm doing this towards you. The mic's right here. Now Bobby can't hear me, only you guys can. You should see him over there. He's still flexing, you guys. Okay, so <laughs> I have a Fuchsia pair that is my roller skate skate park pair. I usually use that one in the ditches too. It's it's my most comfortable. It's a lolly. Lolly is my preference. I have a set of pool blue lollies that are set up for dancing, which I I can't do no matter how good your skates are. <laughs> if you can't dance, it's going to take a lot of time. Michelle told me I need to listen to Prince. She said that she learned rhythm and how to dance from listening to Prince. So that may be something that I, I might want to look into in the future. So that's my, that's that color. And then I have the abomination of Moxie roller skates for street use, which is uh, their paneled different colors. So those have my big chunky soft wheels on it. And I, you know, I just roll around for fun in those guys. Fuchsia is for skate park, and blue is for dancing. Uh, our friend Mallory Forrest asks, how do you qualify to win the skates? I mean, there's not really a qualification. Are you talking about the poppy, these poppy guys I just did is what I'm assuming? I'm looking to, actually, that's a great idea. Um, that's what that $20 might have been for. <laughs> that, that works. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if somebody, if whoever's watching is interested and you wanted to throw down, I guess I could just like go and just do like a little lottery of the people that threw down like likes, subscribes, dollar bills. I'll give you, I'll give you an extra, extra entry for, um, for the donations. Subscribes will get you one. We got to message us and tell us you subscribe because I don't know how we would possibly know that. But the likes I can track, but not everybody needs them. Hmm, good question. You know what I would do? I would find me uh, at Miss Muertos on Instagram, which is MRS underscore Muertos. And let's, uh, let's start a conversation about that because I really would like to get these out to somebody and they're a size six, so uh, only size six needs apply. All right, Jeffrey Evans asks, what is your skate setup? Huh, it's funny you should ask that. Well, I'm assuming you mean for like my parks, my regular use guys. So I'm gonna say that is a size six and a half lolly. I prefer the lolly for ankle flexibility reasons. I also like that it makes it feel like my wheels are attached to my feet. Whereas if I wear a different boot, I feel like there's a boot attached to my feet attached to wheels. So there's there's a, a layer in between that changes my, com my personal comfort level. Also, the way I go through skates, they're a little bit more affordable to replace 
every two years for my hardcore ones. I use the Powerdyne Pro Plate and I like that because it's got the holes, it's lighter, it's got an adjustable pivot pin, and my blocks now mount through that versus having to go onto the king pins, which I really like because it's four screws and they're out and I don't have to take off any other equipment. My wheels, it depends on what I'm doing, but I've recently been testing so many wheels that my mind is made up. But the fun days are great. I really like those for uh, going in the streets, they're a little uh, soft for me at skate parks. However, I would much rather go a little soft in the skate park than like too hard in the street. So that's where I find my balance. If it's a long day, I'm gonna be just literally skating street to skate park to street to skate park. I'll go with the fun days. If I'm going directly to the skate park, stay tuned because we're testing a great wheel for that. Bearings, I like bones bearings. Anywhere from the reds all the way up to the ceramics, they clean nicely, they're reusable, those are great. I've been using the brake pedals as my toe stops and I love them. That's my setup. Cool, the last question, another one from Looney Roachgate who is a, um, a regular on our channel. And they're asking, how old was you when you started skating? Well, I was. I don't remember. <laughs> I know that I started seeing photographs of me in figure skating outfits around, mm, I'm not gonna say the date, around four years old. Uh, but that was already at the level where I was doing figure skating competition. So I've been told I started skating around three. I skated competitions, figure skating competitions until I was seven. And the pressure was so much for me as a child. So I retired at seven as a super tot champion, runner up actually. And I didn't skate again for 20 years. At 27, I was having a hard time and I jumped into roller derby. I bought the skates at the place on the way to practice and just started and just went back in full fire and i haven't stopped skating since and if that was 27 that was 13 years ago <laughs> so i would say i did have an advantage based on having the skills from when i was a kid but my current my current skating has been 13 years and half of that has been in the skate parks Answer more questions? Or are you ready to uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see any reason why not. We no, can answer a couple see. more. We got a little more. Let's see. Um, Jeffrey Evans asks, "What moxie skates do you recommend for men slash boys?" I really, so, I really, so I have a wide foot, like straight up Flintstone status when I walk and my feet are wet it looks like a duck walked through and I really appreciate the lollies flexibility on the width of my feet and it pulls out in a way where the leather and how much you lace it can extend the width of a skate if you look like that unless you have round feet like like sausages or like the spray can there's not a lot of pull but even my skates will start this toe box will start to pull back to even give me more width so i really think that the lollies are a great skate for anybody starting and now they come in colors that may be more palatable to, to the whole market. I think all colors are for everybody, but recently Lolly has uh, started to come in the black suede as well. So that's an option for you. There's uh, also another, uh, the green shade is gonna be changing and that one's gonna be, I think, really popular and that's a great one. I don't know, if it was me, I'd just go with the fuchsia ones. Oh, I do do that. Uh, vegan Magic asks, Will there be any new beach bunny colors? I don't know how much I'm allowed to say, 
but you before the end of this year you can expect to see some other colors on more than one of our lines okay. um, potentially oh. new lines uh, new I'm not telling them, Michelle. I didn't say anything. You're not supposed to call me during lives. You know this. No bat phone. Nothing's happening. Uh, let's see here. Another one from Looney Roller Skate. Why not? Why is it a good idea to use skater socks? I appreciate the sweat absorbency. Honestly, that's why I like them. Has not necessarily to do with the aesthetic, but they are an athletic sock. And I think one of the biggest things that people suffer from, I've heard, but I don't have it because I can blame, or I can thank the skates and the socks. I don't get blisters. And I think part of that has to do with this padded sock and being able to pull the skate down to the appropriate like tightness on my foot and the sweat absorption i think when your feet are wet they're going to slip around a little bit more which can cause blisters and hot spots and i always bring an extra pair of socks when i skate because as soon as i feel that hot spot or slip i just change my sock and i 13 years not one blister and i'm telling you in barcelona when we go out there when we go to greece when we travel in europe i will skate 17 hours in a day with the same skates on from rough terrain roads to skate parks to roller discos to sandy beaches and i don't get blisters but that's because i bring extra socks i and i and i definitely change them when i feel any sort of hot spot in there so skater socks have kept my feet from blisters i thank them i thank moxie skates these things I might have just have some of the nicest feet in roller skating. Can we end it there? I think so. <laughs> Again, subscribe and like if you want more stuff like this. I promise you this will save you money. It will save you time. You can make it your own. I love customization. I love stylized things. I really like wing tips. And this is a way that I can bring that all together and get to have my skates be the exact way they came out of the box for the amount of time that they last like that before I go ahead and change the aesthetic of them. But I would like to see some really cool things. It'd be neat to see some different patterns and, you know, different applications of this stuff. So even if it's your new skates, why not? <laughs> Bye, baby.